Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So in the last video, I think we were talking about uh, a couple things that were done in the lathe and, and questions about the uh, back gears. And there's there's more to do. I want to go over uh, some backlash uh, stuff um, with the cross slide. But before then, um, I'd uh, you know I'm anxious to turn chips, and I have to be honest with you, I did turn a few chips. Uh, but this video is uh, primarily going to be about getting the tail stocks and head stock centers in alignment. Now, uh, what I'm about to do is nothing new. Um, it's not something I invented, and I've seen it a few times on the uh, on YouTube. Um, but I think the first person I've seen do this was uh, Halligan 142. And at the end of the video, I'll put a card so you can see his version of it. So uh, this is a big thanks to Halligan. So. Um, the first thing we want to do in order to get the uh, the tailstock and headstock uh, uh, centers in alignment is that I need to get them sort of close, right? And the way that I want to do that is um, I want to take my trusty knife here or my box cutter, and I want to pull the blade out of here, and I'm going to stick it between the two centers. I'm going to get kind of close here. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten the tailstock down, snug it down. I don't know if you can see that. Let's check. Uh, yeah, you can see that. Okay. And I'm going to take the razor blade here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring the tailstock in until it pinches the razor blade. Now, there's uh, two things to look at here, um, you know, as a preliminary alignment. Um, first of all, you know, I want the razor blade to be vertical, right? But it will only be vertical if the uh, tailstock and, and the uh, headstock uh, centers are in the same plane. Now, you know, this, this is a 70-year-old lathe, so I, I expect there to be wear, so I don't expect that. But now, horizontally, um, I want the... Uh, uh, you know, for them to be in alignment, this razor blade to get it close will um, will be straight this way. So let me uh, let me position the camera. Or let me see if I can zoom in on this, and hopefully I don't make anybody dizzy. Oops, lost focus there. Well, maybe that's the best I'm going to get. All right, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to loosen the tailstock so that I can adjust the set over, and I'm going to move uh, I'm going to move the two set screws on the base uh, against each other here, and move it back to try to straighten this out. And I'm going to be looking down from above, so I know I'm going to have to back the back one out a little bit and move the front one. You see the razor moving. Okay, and I'm just gonna eyeball that and try to get that reasonably, what looks like reasonably straight to me. I think that's it there, at least from my angle. Now I know it is, I know it's tilting this way, but there's nothing I can do about that, but it looks like it's pretty parallel to the face plate so that's going to get me close so i'm going to go ahead and lock the uh, tail stock into or the set screws in position there all right now with that we're a little closer or we're close but of course we're not perfect so let me uh, resituate the camera and I'll show you the dog that I made and then the test bar that I'm going to use. So hold tight. Okay guys, uh, to do this, uh, to set the uh, centers, get them on the same axis, uh, I want to use a bar that we're going to turn between centers, uh, one end of it. And uh, again, uh, I'll, I'll show you. But now I didn't have a drive dog, okay, so I had to make one. So this is my... This is my crude interpretation of a dry dog, drive dog. It's uh, two pieces of 9 16 inch stock with a couple little V's 
um, filed in the middle of it to catch the uh, stock and then a 516 bolt with a head cut off here as a drive pin and this seems to work pretty good and I'll explain why I think it works pretty good this is the uh, <laughs> this is the test bar that we're going to use this is one inch uh, cold rolled steel um, I cut a, a 12 inch section off of a piece of uh, longer piece that I had and uh, you know I, I, I very carefully um, uh, tried to f f file because remember I don't, I don't have a hack I also got a hand hacksaw so I tried to very uh, carefully cut these off and and file these down and then mark the centers and then I went to drill them but my 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 drill is so small that I can't really get the stock and hang it off the end of the table in the vise and drill it. it it moved and it walked real bad so uh, I took the best center that I had or the one that appeared most center uh, and I stuck that in the headstock um, and then uh, dro drove that with the dog and then I just kind of turned this other end until it was it was round and concentric with that with that center now that doesn't really matter I don't think anyway but anyway I'm gonna put the uh, since I have a nice round end I'm gonna put the uh, my drive dog over on this end Let me get my screws tightened up here And I kind of like to uh, make sure that they're pretty much evenly exerting force. Okay, it looks pretty even to me. Okay, so I'm going to stick this in the drive plate. I'm going to use the uh, slot right here. The, the and Bring the center up here and tighten down my... Tailstock clamp and tighten the quill or lock the quill. Actually, I want to put a little pressure on here. It feels good to me. So now I'm going to lock the quill. And the next thing I'm going to do is uh, when I done my first turns, I uh, I turned it a little slower because you know, like I said, I wasn't real um, sure how all this was going to go. So now I'm going to speed the lathe up. All right. Get those out of the way. Okay, and I'm going to give her a test spin here to make sure everything clears. And it does. We can carry it over here. All right. So you can see how far out of alignment this is. So this end here, I'm going to turn down until uh, it's round. How much doesn't really matter, and uh, I'll show you. So let me uh, let me get a little closer view over here, and you guys can laugh at my first attempt at turning on camera here. All right, now I don't have any proper cutting oil. Let me get my block here. Tool post on. I took it off so that uh, the view on the other side would be a little easier to see. All right. All right, and my tool how I want here, my block. I think I want it just like that. Get this tightened down. Now my tool should still be on center. And see how we you can't see a dang thing. So I'll tell you what, let me move the camera and try it from another angle. So hold tight. Okay, so I think that uh, you guys can see from that part. So I don't have any proper cutting oil, but I am going to use a little bit of this 30 or 20 weight. All 
All right. So let's start. Now hold hold the laughs down. Don't distract me, guys. All right. So I'm gonna feed in here until it just touch. All right. Take a little bit of a cut. <clears throat> now I have the feed set to three and a half thousand, so I gotta wait for it to roll around. Okay, now I'm only uh, interested, you know, I only need about an inch or so. That's obviously a very, very light cut. So, rather than yak at you, I'll just, I'll fast forward to this part. Okay, I just want to see if we're round. Not quite yet. Got a little bit more to go, so I'm going to take another 20. All right. All right, so that's round. So now I'm just going to take a, just a real light cut. I'm going to take, a, oh, maybe three or four off the radius. Okay, I think that looks uh, pretty good to me. Nice and round. Let me get a file and knock that off. Knock this corner off. I think I think I brought one in. Yeah, or maybe I didn't. I guess I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Clean it up later. I don't want to waste your time. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to take off the tool post and we're going to um, turn the bar end for end and put this in in the headstock and we're going to set our uh, dial indicator on that and then we're going to flop it around without uh, we're going to adjust the dial indicator to zero and then uh, without uh, touching any of the controls we're going to bring it down here and see where it is down here so let's do that Oops, sorry guys. Alright, let's see if we can get the indicator where we want it. I'm going to get a different uh, indicator stand here. I got a, a granted it's a, <clears throat> it's a knockoff of, uh, Okay, let me pause this and get this indicator stand. I got to change the, uh, I got to move the thing to the other side. Okay, so I've swapped the bar end for end and I've set up the indicator on the tool post. Tried to put the indicator as close to the center line of the bar as I, as I can tell. And then I've uh, fed the cross light in until I've got it, I've preloaded it and I'm set to zero. Okay, so now. What we want to do is take a comparison from the headstock to the stale, uh, tailstock, and we're going to use the same. We're going to use the same surface. So we're going to. I'm going to pull this out, and we're going to swap it around, and then we're going to measure um, the tailstock in um, to see how far it's it's out. So let me pull the camera out and try to get you in frame here. So you can get an idea of what I'm doing here. 
Okay. So, I'm going to reverse my bar. Alright. I'm going to bring this down so that I don't catch the uh, All right, then we're, I'm going to bring this down. Of course, now, remember this this part doesn't matter. It's this area that we turn. So let's come down here. Ah, look at that. <clears throat> i got to show you. So you see... We're on zero. Now, for a better explanation, now that's that's pure luck. I expected it to be at least a few thousands out. Um, I didn't think my eyeball with the razor blade is that good, but I think we're pretty close. And I'm going to do this a few more times uh, just to get the practice, so I'm not stammering in front of the camera. But uh, now that uh, now that the centers have been aligned, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn this bar round. Uh, just to get some practice turning and then um, um, and then I think the next thing to do is tackle the chuck so let me show you what I got there and um, and then uh, probably let you go so hang on okay guys um, like I said I'm gonna I want to test this a few more times uh, for a much much better explanation check out um, Halligan but the uh, the idea is, um, if you recall, Mr. Pete done a centering video where he took uh, two centers that had identical, um, he turned identical uh, diameters on both centers and he just stuck one center in uh, the headstock and one in the tailstock and um, because those diameters that he had turned on the ends of those centers, uh, or the end of the Morse tapers I should say, uh, were exactly the same. He can come up and measure against the headstock one, come down to the tailstock one, and measure against that. And whatever the difference was is how far out the the um, the uh, tailstock uh, alignment was. So really, this is sort of the same principle. I'm um, taking a bar and uh, uh, drill a couple center holes in it. Now, granted, my center holes were off quite a bit, but uh, I did turn this in round so give a nice place. Uh, for the clamp dog to uh, clamp onto. You watch me turn this one here and this is one that we went off of. Um, come over here, preloaded it, uh, preloaded the dial indicator, set it to zero, swapped the bar around, rolled the carriage down here and, and uh, measured up against here and it's and it's zero or dead nuts, right? Now that's, that's got to be a fluke because I got I got to check it again because I, I just can't believe that uh, eyeballing it and trying to get it close with the razor blade uh, really got it, but you never know. Beginner's luck, and they don't get much more of a beginner than me. So um, after uh, I checked that, and I sure that that's in uh, 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 that the t head headstock and tailstock are in line. Then I'm just uh, you know on my own. Uh, I'm going to turn on this bar a little bit, and I'm going to measure both ends here, and and then I'm going to go down to the next nominal size, and I want to try. Uh, to get to that size and uh, turn it round all the way down and then take some micrometer you know uh, readings down it uh, just to see if there is taper and how much taper there is and that because I expect there to be at least some some small variances because the the lathe uh, ways are are worn right so uh, after I feel a little more comfortable with that then uh, the next thing I need to do is um, I have a four jaw chuck. This is the back plate four, and I need to turn this step to fit my four jaw chuck. Um, I'll uh, I'll I'll do that. I, I don't know if I'll be brave enough to do that on camera or not. Uh, my wife uh, a while back bought uh, bought a six inch uh, four jaw chuck from Shars, and uh, uh, there's the key and the and the bolts. And of course, I bought the uh, bought the uh, um, back plate with it. So here's the chuck. Shars chuck. It's a um, 
K7266 inch four jaw independent chuck. Um, so I also have a three jaw chuck. I think I, want, I got other issues I'll have to deal with on that back plate because it's quite a bit different back plate. But uh, again, like I said, I got to turn the step on this here to fit the recess on this chuck. So anyway, I'm not going to take up any more of your time with this video. You get the uh, idea. And uh, so that's uh, hopefully a lesson that uh, I've learned as a uh, as a uh, uh, YouTube shop student, and uh, and hopefully you know as, as I'm less nervous about uh, cutting metal and running this thing, uh, my uh, shop student videos will get better. So in the meantime, hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. I can't. There's uh, guys out there that I just can't think enough. They've given me advice. They've sent me parts. They've done all kinds of things, and I'm just. Uh, absolutely uh, amazed <laughs> at uh, the generosity and kindness and friendship that I've uh, 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 have uh, experienced uh, with YouTube. So other than that, have a blessed day.